Starborn Cafe by Miss Yuki 1990. Chapter 7 Reunited. The Avengers ran into the tower as though hellhounds were chasing them and squeezed into the first available elevator. They ran into the top room and skidded to a stop when the god of thunder they hadn't seen in two years greeted them by raising a glass of cognac. It has been a long time, my friends. He put the glass down and walked over to them with that familiar grin on his face. Four! We thought you wouldn't return anymore, Steve said at your hands with the enthusiastically grinning Norse god. It took time to repel the Bifrost. Without the Tesseract, it would have been impossible. Thor explained as he shook hands with everyone. But I am here now. Father agreed to allow me to stay here on Midgard until I was ready to rule in his place. Great, Tony said it took a seat. The team is not going to play. We're ready for anything and everything. The others exchanged amused glances, which disappeared fairly quickly, following a wave of warmth with watched over them, making Thor look at the entrance to the room with a frown. What was that? He asked, and the others looked at him in confusion. What was what? Bruce asked and looked around only to frown. Where is Van? I was sure he followed us here. Thor frowned at that, focusing his intense stare on Bruce. Van? He is the bartender at a cafe I frequent lately, Bruce explained. He's a good man. We'll go together there soon. I'm sure you'll like him. He is a great warrior. Thor's frown deepened with weariness. Is he a sorcerer? Everyone raised an eyebrow at him. A sorcerer? Clint asked and Thor nodded. I felt magic, muttered the Norse god, making his friend's eyes fill with understanding. He is a wizard, Natasha clarified, and Thor hummed thoughtfully, brown eyebrows narrowing as he stared at the empty doorway. His magic felt more powerful than Loki's. Are you certain that he is a friend? He is a good man, Bruce said, and the others agreed. We don't know him well, but I can agree with Bruce, Clint added, and Natasha nodded. We have his files. You can read them if you want, she offered, and Thor hummed in agreement. But first we have to settle you in your room. We have time for everything else, Steve said, and Thor smiled. Very well. Shall we inform Fury first? Tony asked, although the tone of his voice suggested that he cleared little for that and spoke up only for the sake of speaking. I'm sure he figured it out by now, Steve drawled with a smirk, and Bruce snorted. I wonder what the papers will say. I must remember to buy them tomorrow, commented the Gamma Scientist, and Clint snorted. Probably something about an insane experiment gone wrong, he muttered. Or someone losing control, Natasha added. Or Tony drying out some new technology. Bruce threw in his own cents. Of course, Tony grumbled. Blame it all on me. Thor let go of that familiar booming laugh of his, clapping the back of Steve, who stood closest to him, and making Captain America choke up a bit. You haven't changed at all, my friends. He cheered happily, placing his hand on Steve's shoulder and giving it a small squeeze while Steve gifted him with a small smile, still suppressing a cough. You seem to have changed somewhat, Natasha commented, eyeing Thor's blue jeans and white button-up shirt. Where's the suit of armor? I had time to observe you in the past years. If I'm going to stay on Midgard, I might as well fit in. I believe that is the correct phrase. Well, Tony clapped his hands and stood up. You might just fit in if you stop speaking like you're from the Middle Ages, but that will be taken care of in time. Now, I suggest we pack up and go to bed. I, for one, need my eight hours of beauty sleep, and my lovely wife is really waiting for me. A century of beauty sleep will do little for you, Clint muttered, so only Natasha heard him clearly. What was that like a loss? Tony asked, and Clint offered him a falsely innocent smile. I said that it was a good idea coming from you. Tony sniffed as though offended. All of you know that all my ideas are good ideas. People just don't perform them correctly. Everyone rolled their eyes and followed after Tony with Bruce and Steve walking on either side of Thor. It is good to be back, Thor said with a small grin and looked at Steve when the World War II soldier clapped his back. It's good to have you back, my friend, Steve answered and Bruce nodded. Yes, it's good to have you back. Starborn Cafe shook with an explosion of magic when Ven apparated in the middle of it, breathing as though he ran a marathon. The door clicked locked, and Ven all but collapsed in the closest armchair, bending forward and bracing his elbows on his parted knees before he hid his face in his trembling hands. Had a Ven? What is wrong? He raised his head up a bit and came face to face with Erd's transparent form, making him realize just how out of control his magic is for her to have absorbed enough to become slightly more solid. 
Her mercury-like eyes were looking in him with worry, hands raised towards him as though she wanted to take a hold of him, but didn't dare out of fear of hurting him. He is here, Earl. He is really here. Ben spoke in a wavering voice, whole body trembling with the strain of trying to rein in his magic. I was so close to him, I... I could feel his power rolling off of him in waves, pure and unbound. A small, almost hysterical smile tilted his lips. Then... I couldn't walk out to meet him. I, I froze up when I saw him. He shut up and squeezed his eyes tightly shut, ducking his head and fisting his hands on his temples. Then you need to calm down. Your magic is busting. Please calm down, Erd urged gently and covered his trembling hands with her own, wincing at the feel of his wild magic. My magic responded to his closeness. I couldn't, I couldn't think. My only thought was to get away from that. I... He choked up and his shoulders hunched, pulse after pulse of powerful magic rolling off of him and rattling the glass cups resting on the shelves behind the bar. I'm such a coward! No! Erd spoke lovingly and wrapped her arms around him, hugging him as tightly as he could due to his hunched form. You've been close to your chosen, my sweet. You were simply overwhelmed. Maybe it is better you left... You have time to calm down a little. I'll keep everyone away tomorrow. You need time for yourself, all right? Then Chucky said, It's his power, Earl. He spoke in a wavering voice and raised his head, making her move back a bit to look into his eyes. I've never felt anything like it. It's like like a deceptively calm lake with a rough tornado-like current hidden beneath the surface. Erd smiled lovingly at him and caressed his cheeks with the back of her fingers. I could barely breathe. My shield just collapsed. It, it was nothing like last time, man. It's like he's gotten even stronger. Erd smiled and cupped his cheeks within her warm, almost completely solid hands. It is only normal for you to feel like this, my sweet. She spoke wisely. He is, after all, your chosen, your life mate. He should be strong enough to be able to share in your own magic. Now you at least know that he is worthy. Ben snorted about his head, shaking it as his hands fell on his knees, and he all but slumped forward, resting his forehead on Erd's shoulder. Yes, he muttered, but now I worry if I am worthy of him. Erd frowned at that and made him look at her by taking a firm hold of his face and raising his head. I never want to hear you speak like that again. Do you hear me, Hadavan Sigurdsson? She spoke strictly. Never again. Adavan shivered when a cold wind passed down his spine. All right, he choked out. Erd frowned in suspicion but nodded her head. Now why don't you make yourself some tea and get some rest? You need to calm your mind. Ben nodded and Erd moved back, becoming invisible once again. With a sigh, Ben walked over to the bar. His hands were shaking as he reached for a cup. Deciding against it, he huffed and shook his head. I'm going to bed. I'll see you tomorrow, Erd. Wake me if someone comes. He spoke as he made his way into the back and up the stairs to his loft. No one will come tomorrow. You need some time for yourself, my sweet. Erd spoke lovingly as Ven entered his room. A warm wind danced around him and his clothes changed into a pair of comfortable pajamas. He collapsed on his bed and with a gust of wind the cover was pulled from under him and lowered gently over him. The bed dipped beside him under an invisible weight and a gentle touch upon his brow made his tense body relax. Sleep, my sweet, Erd whispered and became visible for a moment again. Sleep, my sunlight. Ever so slowly, Ven's eyes closed and he fell into a fitful sleep. Erd sighed and disappeared again. Rest, my sweet. Everything will work out all right. She brushed her fingers through his hair and released it from its bounds. It spread a crown Ven's lithe form like a velvety cloak. I'll watch over you, my beautiful Ven. Everything will work out all right. Bruce frowned when he tried the doorknob of Starborn Cafe. It was locked and he looked to the side in worry. Bruce hadn't slept well last night out of worry, and it didn't help that Hulk was in much of a same state. Bruce was sure that Ven had followed them last night when they ran for the tower after the winds calmed, but no matter how hard he thought about it, he couldn't think of a reason for Ven to run off before meeting Thor. Bruce had come to think of Ven as a dear friend, and he wanted to make sure there was nothing wrong. In hindsight, Bruce had noticed that the bartender had acted somewhat strange last night. 
Haddovan was usually very well composed, and Bruce was honestly under the impression that nothing could rattle the owner of Starborn Cafe. So when Bruce figured out that something had been different about Ven when the Avengers came to talk to him last night, he tried to think of a reason, only to come up with nothing realistically valid. He looked at the door again and sighed heavily. I'll come back tomorrow. He was about to walk away when a breath of warm air washed over him and the door opened after a quiet click. He frowned and pushed the door open before entering and taking a look around. No fire burned in the fireplaces and the cafe wasn't quite as warm as it usually was. Then he called out and walked into the cafe, closing the door as he entered. The back door opened and the sight that greeted Bruce made him tense up. His eyes widened and he hurried over to the bar. Out of him, what happened? He breathed out when he got closer to the other man. Out of him was pale and dressed into a pair of black pants and a slightly baggy buttoned-up black shirt. He had barely visible bags under his eyes and his hair was tied low. Bruce noticed Hadovan's hands were shaking minutely and that he was quite tense even though he tried to greet Bruce with his usual smile. I'm just not feeling all that well, Bruce. You don't have to worry. Ben tried to sound reassuring, but the raspy quality of his voice that wasn't there the day before made it quite impossible. Bruce looked to the side when fire burst into life in the closest fireplace. Why don't you sit down while I make us some- Ben! Bruce cried out and jumped forward when Ben swayed on his feet. Damn it! Ben gasped out and covered his eyes with his right hand left fisted on the bar. Bruce got a better hold of him and threw Ven's free arm over his shoulder. I'm taking you to bed. You aren't well. Bruce, I won't hear it! Bruce snapped sharply and helped Ven up the stairs and to the bedroom. He put Ven on the bed and covered him with a blanket, tucking him in under it before he took a seat to Ven's right. What happened? He asked as he placed a hand on Ben's burning forehead and wincing at the heat. My magic is taking a toll on my body, Ven muttered. He closed his eyes and relaxed as much as he could. My shields fell yesterday and I'm having some trouble putting them up again. Bruce hummed at the explanation. Hulk was telling him that it wasn't a lie, but it wasn't the whole truth either. Did you eat today? Do you want me to make something? Ben opened his eyes weakly and looked at Bruce with a slightly raised eyebrow, making a nerve beside Bruce's red eye glitch. I have lived alone for years, you know. I can cook. Ben laughed weakly and closed his eyes again. I don't want to bother you, he murmured, and Bruce rolled his eyes. Please, after what you did for me, this is the least I can do, he muttered and stood up. I'll find my way around the kitchen. You try to get some rest. Ben nodded, already falling into a fitful slumber, and Bruce sighed and made his way out of the room. He looked around, trying to think of where the kitchen might be. He felt something push against his back and raised an eyebrow. Following the lead of the push, he walked to the second door on the right and entered the kitchen. All right, he muttered and looked around the dark brown kitchen. Instead of a table, there was an island bar in front of a line of cabinets with two bar stools in front of it. There was a big window on one wall, and the light turned on the minute he walked in. Now, what to make? With a gust of wind, three cabinets and the fridge opened. Taking it all in stride, Bruce walked over to the kitchen and found some chicken bones in it. A chicken soup? He spoke up, and a warm wind caressed his back. I'll take that as a yes, whatever you are. He took the packed chicken bones and walked over to the cabinets. He found some carrots and potatoes there, together with spices and some mint tea and a small crystal bottle with a mercury-like liquid in it. I don't suppose this goes in the soup? He said, and a playful wind danced through his hair. He juggled and put the bottle beside the box of mint tea. Soup first and then tea. An hour later, he placed a bowl of chicken soup on a tray together with a spoon and a hand dowel. He looked at the cup of tea he prepared and then at the little bottle of the strange substance. He never saw anything like it. It looked like moonlight captured in a bottle. There was no other way to describe it. Two drops. Bruce tensed up when he heard a whisper in the back of his mind. Hulk growled lowly, but didn't react otherwise. Bruce swallowed over a lump and took the little bottle in his hand. It was so small, it fit in the middle of his palm. If he wanted to be perfectly honest, he was afraid he would break it if he squeezed too hard. He uncapped it carefully and tipped it over the cup of tea. One, two. He counted the drops and tilted the bottle back before closing it again. A cabinet opened, and he found a glass container of honey, taking it with a smile. One teaspoon. 
That strange voice whispered again, and a drawer opened. He took a teaspoon from it and put the honey in the tea, which turned an enchanting moonlight-colored liquid. "'Whoever you are, I hope you know what you're doing,' he muttered. That playful warm wind danced around him again, and he thought he heard someone giggle. He put the cup on the tray and carefully picked it up. He carried it to Ven's room and raised an eyebrow when the bedside lamp flickered on, making Ven groan as he opened his eyes and raised his head slightly to look at Bruce, who gifted him with a sheepish smile. "'I hope it's good,' Bruce said and carried the tray over while Ven pushed himself into a sitting position. If Bruce was perfectly honest, Ven looked like death warmed over. Oh, "'I'm sure it's good,' Ven whispered and raised an eyebrow when he saw the cup of tea. "'Oh, did you?' He looked at Bruce before he looked at something behind him, making the gamma scientist raise a brow in confusion. "'What?' Bruce asked, and Ven shook his head, relaxing against the headboard. "'Nothing. Thank you, Bruce,' he said and accepted the tray. Bruce took a seat at the foot of the bed while Ven ate slowly. Having nothing better to do, Bruce looked around the room, gaze falling on a big bookshelf to his right, eyes widening with sudden interest. "'You're free to take a look,' Ven said, and Bruce looked at him while Ven smirked at him knowingly. "'You're a scientist, Bruce. I know you're interested in those books.' Bruce blushed, knowing that there was no sense in arguing that point, and he stood up to take a look at the many old-looking tomes. Some of the books he was familiar with, mostly books on herbs, different drinks, some history books, and a few books on philosophy, psychology, and human behavior. Others you could barely read the titles of, and some were on things he supposed were connected to magic. "'You have many interests,' he commented and took a book that said, "'Hogwarts, a history.' "'Mind if I borrow this?' He looked at Ben, who smiled and finished his soup. "'Not at all. Feel free to take whatever you find interesting.' Bruce nodded and walked over to the bed, the old book held safely in his hands before he placed it on the nightstand and took a seat to Ven's right. "'Are you feeling any better?' Ven nodded, took a sip of his tea, and sighed. He leaned back against the headboard and smiled at Bruce thankfully. "'Thank you, Bruce. I just didn't have any strength to do anything today.' Bruce blushed slightly but nodded his head. Hulk grunted a laugh in the back of his mind and Bruce gave him a mental swat on the shoulder." Ben laughed quietly as though he knew what transpired in Bruce's head, and the gamma scientist looked at him with a raised eyebrow. Your expression speaks enough, Ben offered as an explanation, and Bruce shrugged, knowing that asking Ben for the truth would only leave him more confused. Did you open the cafe today? Bruce asked, and Ben shook his head. I thought I would, he spoke and shrugged elegantly. In the end, I only had a few guests in the morning and two in the afternoon. Thankfully, they were all old friends. Being around them made this a bit easier to handle. Bruce frowned at that. Could you tell me what's wrong? And not the edited version, if you please. Ben raised an eyebrow at him. Edited version? That story you tried to sell earlier. Bruce hinted, and Ben whizzed slightly. Can't we leave it at that? Bruce gave him a strict look, and Ben sighed. My magic... He started and stopped as though he was looking for the right words. Well, one can say there is a lot of it in me. How do you mean that? Bruce asked for clarification, making Hadavan frown as he tried to think of a way to explain his condition in a way that would make it clear to Bruce just what Ven had been going through. Let's put it this way. He placed the cup on the tray, raised his left hand, and Bruce moved back a little in surprise when a ball of light the size of a grown man's fist appeared above Ven's hand. Each wizard has a magical core in his body. Usually, when you put it like this... It is rarely bigger than this. Bruce nodded in understanding and then raised his right hand. This is my call. Bruce all but jumped back when a ball of light at least ten times bigger than the other one appeared between them. What the? Bruce muttered and both balls vanished. Hadavan swallowed audibly and placed his hands in his lap. You could say that my magic is actually too big for my body. How is that possible? Bruce breathed out and Hadavan shrugged. I don't know. Something like this hasn't happened since Merlin. My mentor in the Orbo Force said that my magical core is possibly even bigger than Merlin's was. I'll never know. Now the problem is that in Merlin's time, things were different. He was free to use his magic how he wanted, where he wanted, and for whatever he wanted. I can't do that without risking exposure. So I built up shields to keep it locked within my body, releasing only very small amounts constantly to keep the pressure from building up. What would happen to you if it becomes too much for you to handle? Bruce asked, and Hadavan looked at him with a leveled stare, although his eyes were somehow dull and sad. My magic 
would go rampant. It would probably destroy my body and eventually kill me. Bruce's eyes widened and he swallowed over a lump that suddenly appeared in his throat. His heart stopped for a second and Hulk growled lowly, fearing for their newfound friend. Can anything be done? Fen bowed his head so that his bangs covered his eyes and started to play with the edge of the blanket. Harvin, can anything be done? Harvin nodded, slowly licking dry lips. I need to find someone who would bond with me. Whoever it is, they need to be powerful enough to handle my magic. Bond with someone? Bruce asked, and Hadavan looked at him from under messy banks. Yes, bond, mate, marry, however you want to put it. Bruce frowned and looked at the carpeted floor, processing the new information quickly before looking at Hadavan again. How would that help you? When a wizard or a witch marries, they don't just put rings on their fingers and sign a paper, Hadavan explained. First part of the ceremony does have that, but the second part consists of the binding of mind, body, and magic. Mind, body, and magic? Bruce asked, brows narrowing in confusion. Yes. Ben nodded, something Bruce couldn't name glimmering in Hadavan's amazing eyes. How does that happen? Ben shot him a slight smile, and Bruce blushed to the roots of his hair. I don't think I need to have the beds and the beast talk with you, Bruce. The gamma scientist cleared his throat, shifting it as he uncomfortably. And here I was ready to offer assistance, he murmured, and Ben laughed quietly, gazing at Bruce with a grateful gleam in his eyes. I guess I should thank you for the thought, Ben said, and Bruce's blush worsened, disappearing quickly when the wizard looked down again, fingers playing with a loose seam of the blanket thrown over Hadavan's lap. Do you have anyone in mind? Bruce asked, and Hadavan licked his lips, shifting his weight a bit. In a way, he answered uncertainly, gaze focused on anything but Bruce. Do they know about this? Bruce leaned forward to try to look in Hadavan's eyes, but failing when the wizard tilted his head to the side and looked at the window to his left. No, Hadavan chuckled and shook his head. He doesn't know about me or anything about this. Bruce's frown deepened at that. Can you tell me who he is? Fen looked at Bruce with a pointed stare, making Bruce recoil slightly. It was someone he had either seen before or someone he knew. Was it one of Ven's regular guests? No. Ven didn't act any different with anyone Bruce had seen in the cafe during the past few days. He tried to remember a moment where Ven acted out of character, and almost immediately the events of last night came to the front of his memory. Thunder God. Hope grunted and Bruce's eyes widened. It's Thor, isn't it? He murmured almost breathlessly, and Ben juggled. Right, on the first guess. Bruce frowned. Did you two meet before? Ben shook his head. Not personally, no. I told you I was there when you fought against those aliens. Bruce nodded. It's not just that I didn't want to be found. When I first saw him... A shiver shook Ben's body. The wizard closed his eyes for a moment and fisted his hands, and Bruce shivered when a wave of power passed over him. I could feel his power, Bruce. I could practically taste it. Ben breathed out and looked at Bruce. I must say that I all but ran away this time as well. As well? Bruce asked before it clicked. You did follow us yesterday! Yes, Hadavan admitted. And just like the last time, my power responded to Thor's closeness. Bruce forced down a swallow, not knowing what to say. He didn't understand everything, guessing that it would take time, but something he could understand quite well. The sorrow of caring about someone and being unable to be with them. I don't think I can help you with this, Bruce muttered and then gifted him with a small smile. Don't worry about me, Bruce, the gamma scientist looked at Ven with a doubtful stare. Things will work out for better or for worse. I'd rather they worked out for the better, Bruce drawled and Ven laughed again. If Bruce was honest, the raven-haired wizard already looked better. Like I said, don't worry. I can take care of myself. Ben spoke calmly, and Bruce scoffed. Yes, but you have to admit that you're better at taking care of others than taking care of yourself. Ben chuckled and nodded his head. I was told that on several occasions. In fact, I think Fury raged about it the time we worked together. Bruce snorted and rolled his eyes. You'll have to tell me about that sometime. For now, I think you should get some more sleep. Do you want me to stay the night? There's no need. Ben spoke tiredly, eyes already slipping closed. I already feel much better. I wouldn't say much better, but you do look better than you did an hour ago. Bruce admitted and Ben smiled. Tomorrow I'll be good as new. 
Fen promised, and Bruce gave him a skeptical look, snorting when the tray disappeared from Fen's lap with a wizard smirking at Bruce as though to say, See, I'm not lying. I'll make sure to come and visit you in the morning to confirm that. Rest well, Bruce said, and Ben nodded at him. You as well. With that, Bruce left the room and made his way down into the cafe. He noticed that even though the fires weren't burning, the atmosphere in the cafe seemed warmer again. He shook his head, deciding to attribute that fact to magic and simply go with it. The door opened before he managed to take a hold of the knob, and a warm wind danced around him as he stepped out. Thank you. He raised an eyebrow as the door closed behind him. Weird, he muttered and made his way back to the tower. Very, very weird. Is everything all right? Thor looked up from the computer screen at Bruce, who was leaning against the door frame, leaning to the left. Yes, I'm just checking up on an old friend, Thor said, and Bruce walked over. Jane Foster Brightman? Isn't she the scientist who works on interdimensional traveling for S.H.I.E.L.D.? Thor nodded, grinning proudly. Yes, Jane and I met the first time I came to my Earth. Thor quickly corrected himself, and Bruce smiled. She taught me a lot of things. I am happy to see that she achieved a lot in the past three years. With S.H.I.E.L.D. backing her up, there was no way for her to fail. Bruce commented, only to frown when Thor grunted, shut down the screen, and rested against the backrest of the chair, massive arms crossed over a broad chest. I have read the files you have on the sorcerer. Bruce tensed up slightly, and Thor tilted his head to the side in confusion. And? Bruce asked and cleared his throat. I find him an interesting man indeed, Thor murmured, raising his right hand to rub his chin with his fingers. He was very young, but he was given credit for great accomplishments. I heard of that Lord Voldemort. My mother was close to the Lords. Verdandi and she often watched over Earth, but deemed it unnecessary to interfere. I cared little for that at that time. Thor sat in for a moment, his eyes flashed with shame. All I remember is that my mother mentioned a child with the mark of thunder. That intrigued me, and I asked her about it, but all she told me was that I would find out everything in time. Bruce nodded, and Thor looked at the screens again. As I said, I read the files, and I realize your bot hunter is the one that brought down Voldemort. I had hoped I would find something about that child, but it seems Mother was for once wrong. At that, Thor winced, and Bruce raised an eyebrow in surprise. What is it? I sincerely hope she did not hear that. Thor muttered, and Bruce laughed. If he intrigues you so much, why don't you go and visit him? Bruce's words left Thor thinking, but it didn't last long. He gifted the gamma scientist with a bright smile and stood up, his tall, muscular form towering over Bruce. I just might. Thor clapped Bruce's back, making the scientist choke up and cough from the force of the hit, but Thor didn't notice it, for he was already walking towards the elevator. You might be surprised with what you'll find, Bruce muttered into his chin, rubbing his left shoulder with his right hand and chuckling when he heard Hulk's rumbling growl. Maybe we did manage to help then, hmm? The Gamma Scientist commented for himself, hearing Hulk's agreeing hum. About that, although that remains to be seen. Then laughed brightly and shook his head. Seriously, Dean, you actually made the same mistake again. The hunter pulled his eyes, suppressing a laugh of his own. Sam was still laughing while Castiel was only smiling slightly, cradling his drink in his hands. What do you want? It's not like I remember every single detail from every single hum Sam and I did. Dean drawled, smirking at Adavan, who thisked and rested his chin on his left hand. But still, Sam shut up when Dean glared at him, and Adavan laughed quietly again. Never mind that, how long are you staying? He asked and looked at Cassiel. Two to three days, said the farmer angel. We can't find any leads to hunts at the moment, so we wanted to spend some time with Sam. And visit our favorite bartender, of course. Dean smirked and then winked at him. I won't charge you less for sucking up, Dean Winchester. You won't charge him, period. Sam muttered and then turned to him with a small teasing glare. You just had to spoil my fun. I wanted to make him sweat a little. Then pretended to pout as Sam huffed. Well, sorry. He drawled with a smirk. Next time you want to make my brother sweat, give me a sign. Another round of laughter echoed through Starborn Cafe, calming gradually before Castile spoke up. How was your magic? He asked Hadavan. I thought I felt it the day before yesterday. Ben sighed and took a sip of his tea. I can't say I'm getting better, he admitted, knowing that there was no sense in lying to them. 
They were too good at reading people, and he just didn't have the heart to hide anything from those he considered friends. Is there anything we can do? Sam asked in worry. Yeah, Dean agreed. Just Steele ain't an angel anymore, but he's still in contact with a few. Ben shook his head with a grateful smile. No, I'm afraid there was nothing you can do. I just have to bow with it. I don't like that. Sam muttered into his chin, shooting Ven a pointed glare. Me neither, Castiel agreed, and Ven sighed. I can't help you with that, he said and shook his head, knowing that trying to tell them not to worry about him would only lead to an argument, and even though Ven had managed to regain a semblance of control over his magic, he was still feeling strained and tired. While he appreciated their worry, Ven didn't want to talk about it, knowing that it wouldn't resolve anything. But how to distract them? Dean, Sam, and Castiel seemed determined to stick to the subject. He looked at them, and all of a sudden, an idea struck him. But I can help you with a hunt, if you're interested. Dean and Castiel leaned forward, and Sam perked up a bit. Hanavan's off for obviously taking their minds off of his problem, even if it would be for a few short minutes. What is it about? Dean asked. I need you three to hunt down something for me, Ben said, crossing lean legs and stapling his fingers in front of himself. Three? Dean looked at Sam and shrugged. I could take a short break from my studies, Sam said. I have two more exams to take and I could take them in June. Besides, Sam smiled almost shyly and looked at them from under messy bangs. I kind of miss hunting. Love going to college and everything, but I miss the time on the road. Dean grinned and Castiel smiled while Ben laughed quietly. Now that that's settled, Dean looked at Ben, practically bursting with excitement. What is it you want us to find? I need you to find a mirror, Ben said, and the three looked at him with dull, confused stares. A mirror, Dean stated, and Ben nodded minutely. Yes, I need you to find the Yata no Kagami. The three exchanged confused glances. Yata no Kagami? Sam asked. Yes, Ben confirmed. The Japanese government says that there are three mirrors in three different cities, but I know for a fact that neither one of those is the real Yata no Kagami. The real one was broken some years ago and brought back into the spirit world. I know it was fixed and hidden somewhere safe because it was stolen before it was broken. I need you to find it. Why would you need the real Yata no Kagami? Castiel asked and Ben shrugged. Call it a private investment. He said and licked his lips, the three too busy with their quiet communication to notice the way Hadovan's eyes darkened for a mere moment. What's so special about it? Dean looked at Hadovan, who immediately straightened and plastered a small smile on his face. If you need a mirror, why don't you just buy one? Hadovan winked at Dean and smirked. I'm not about to make it all easy on you. Do some research. Enjoy yourselves. When you find it, I'll treat you to whatever you want. Dean grinned. Whatever we want? He asked excitedly, and had of it suppressed the need to snigger at the hunter. Even if we want you to cook for us. This time Ben just had to laugh, especially at the puppy dog look pointed him by Dean. The older Winchester may say that Sam was the one who could get anything out of anyone with his version of the puppy dog stare, but in Hannafin's honest opinion, Dean just had to look at someone with those big washed out green eyes, and the world would be his for the taking. In some ways, it was a pity that Dean had always put Sam in front of his own needs, but on the other hand, Dean now had Castiel. There was not a single speck of doubt in Hadovan's heart that Castiel made damn sure that Dean would take care of himself for a change. I offer you whatever you want, and you want me to cook for you? But that didn't stop Hadovan from wondering about Dean's version of a reward. Well, I for one would like to borrow any book you have on natural-born wizards. Sam said, and then nodded in understanding before turning to Castiel. And you, Castiel? I shall think about it and tell you later. Good, he said and offered them an expectant look. Am I safe to assume you will do this for me? Sure, Dean said. We'll find this mirror for you. Ben smiled. He was about to say something when a wave of familiar power washed over him. His three friends looked at him in worry when he looked at the door, lips parting and eyes glimmering in a way they had never seen before. Vroom. Sam called out when Ven stood up and took a small step towards the front door. Oh, is that... I'm sorry, Ven. Skull didn't tell me he was coming. In that moment, the door opened. Sam, Dean, and Castiel stood up, but took a step back when in walked a tall man with shoulder-long blonde hair tied at the nape of his neck and dressed in blue jeans and a white button-up shirt that showed his strong muscle build. His sky-blue eyes took everything in quickly and settled on Hadovan, who swallowed over a lump, trying not to lose his composure. He read the files too, Hadovan, 
He knows. Hadovan pushed down the trembling and slammed so many shields around his magic that his vision spun for a second. Good evening, the newcomer greeted in a gruff voice, and Hadovan forced down a heavy swallow, lips tilting into a small smile as he steeled his stance. Good evening, Lord Thor. Welcome. 